So good morning. On behalf of the leadership, faculty, and staff at Kent State University College of Nursing, I would like to congratulate you on being admitted to the professional's nursing sequence and welcome you to our spring 2024 BSN White Coat Ceremony. Isn't this great? Look, the smiles are amazing. If you could see them from this side, it's great. The nursing profession has a long, rich history steeped in tradition. Today we are celebrating the White Coat Ceremony. While it's not new to medical professions, it is relatively new to nursing. As you continue your educational journey, you are also beginning your journey into becoming a nurse. This is the day that your life begins to change. This is the day that you commit to growing into the professional nurse you aspire to be for the rest of your career. There are many rights and privileges associated with being a member of the nursing profession, but there is also great responsibility. Today you will take a pledge to uphold the tenets of the nursing profession through IE Cares. Integrity, excellence, compassion, collaboration, altruism, respect, resilience, empathy, and service. Take a moment and look around the room at the leadership and faculty who have assembled to witness this moment in your educational journey. Most of them are sitting up here. <laughs> they are here to teach and support you, celebrate your wins, and assist you when you have to face challenges. I wish you the best, and I cannot wait to see all that you will contribute to the profession. Please welcome our very own Kent State University College of Nursing, Dean Dr. Versi Johnson Mallard, who will guide you through the remainder of this morning's ceremony. Thank you, Dr. Moscalo, for that warm introduction. Hello, beautiful people. I am so grateful that you're, sat, that you're sitting before us and that you chose Kent State University to start your career in nursing. This is an exciting time and this is an, a challenging time to be a nurse. You will meet some powerful professors that try to, within the first, because this is your first semester, they are highly talented, they are highly experienced, and what they're gonna to try to do is break these concepts down to you in 15 weeks. Some of it will go totally over your head. Other parts of it you will say, I don't get what she's talking about, I don't get what he's saying to me. But don't make it their problem make it our problem. Try to decipher it, go back to the textbook, talk to each other to try to make sense of it. The first semester is really challenging because you have to transition from the way that you have learned to exercise your mind for many years, from elementary school to middle school to high school, even to your first year as a freshman student here at KSU. How you learn, there's textbooks that are written on ways of knowing. It looks very different in nursing, okay? You will be challenged. And it's gonna make you not feel smart sometimes, but believe me, the only reason you're in this room is because you are smart. You're the best. So with that said, I'm gonna go on script and I just want you to know that you are here because you belong here, because we want you here, because we need you at the bedside. Okay? So the white ceremony, the white coat ceremony is the oldest and the most well-known program of the Gold Foundation. The Arnold P. Gold Foundation established the white coat ceremony in 1993. It was founded at Columbia University in the College of Medicine. It's a way to emphasize the human, humanism in medicine at the very start of the medical education. In 2014, the vital role nurses play in the healthcare, the Gold Foundation partnered with the American Association of College of Nursing to adapt the ceremony for nursing. 
While it takes on different forms, the rite of passage ceremony emphasizes the importance of humanistic patient care, and this is defined as recognizing compassion, collaboration, and scientific excellence in healthcare, early training in the nursing field, and professional identification. With that said, we're going to watch a short video. The video is, uh, is the keynote speaker for the Gold Foundation, and this video is um, played around 450 different schools who host a white coat ceremony. So enjoy the short video. Hello, I'm Deb Troutman, President and Chief Executive Officer for the American Association of Colleges of Nursing. It is my pleasure to welcome you to your white coat ceremony. Today is a celebration of the commitment that you are making to provide compassionate care. I am proud to help welcome you into our noble profession. It is also my pleasure to introduce our special keynote speaker. Rear Admiral Aisha Mix is the Chief Nurse Officer and Assistant Surgeon General in the United States Public Health Service Commission Corps. In this capacity, she advises the United States Department of Health and Human Services and the Surgeon General on the deployment, retention, and development of nurse professionals, including more than 4,000 active duty nurse officers and civilian nurses. With over 25 years in nursing, Rear Admiral Mix has served as a clinician, a public health practitioner, an educator, and an emergency manager. Her distinguished career and varied leadership roles reflect her passion and focus on health equity, health workforce development, and community level engagement to improve population health outcomes. She graduated with her Bachelor of Science and Master of Science in Nursing from Hampton University in Virginia. She also completed a Master's of Public Health degree from Johns Hopkins University, and she received her Doctor of Nursing Practice degree from Case Western Reserve University. Rear Admiral Mix remains connected to nursing education with contributing faculty appointments at the Uniformed Services, University of the Health Sciences, and Walden University. Throughout her career, she has served as a consummate advocate for nurses, the nursing profession, and public health, with a true commitment to protecting, promoting, and advancing the health and safety of the nation. Please join me in welcoming Rear Admiral Mix. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for this invitation to join you at such a pivotal point in your nursing education. To know me really is to know my commitment to promoting nursing as a profession, to mobilizing nurses to address health priorities across the nation, and also retaining a diverse nursing workforce that's capable of increasing access to healthcare and also decreasing health disparities and health inequities. So when I say it's truly an honor to be here, it really is. Um, to be able to be here with you to celebrate your dedication and also your commitment to centering your patients and your nursing practice. I recall the moment that I actually knew that I wanted to become a nurse. It was on a college tour and faculty from the School of Nursing actually asked me if I knew the difference between nursing and medicine. At the time, I fundamentally understood, yes, there's a difference, but I didn't necessarily have an answer for them on that day. And so what the faculty member did is she actually explained to me that the difference between medicine and nursing is that medicine treats the illness while nurses treat the patient. That was such a profound aha moment for me. And when I say that, it really was and it remains one of the most profound statements that I've ever heard. Because in that moment, I realized two different things. So one, I wanted to be a nurse, right? I thought I might want to be a pediatrician, but in that moment, I knew that I wanted to be a nurse. And I knew that I wanted to be a nurse because what intrigued me most in becoming a healthcare professional was the ability to engage with people and engage with them in a way that actually made their life better. 
The second part was that it was my first example that I can remember of the power of placing people at the center and as the focus, right? So placing people at the center, not only of their care, but actually trusting and believing in them that they can actually choose the option that is the best for the best outcome in their own life. So the faculty member didn't try to convince me that, you know, one way was better than the other, you know, medicine versus nursing. It was a respect for both, but really an understanding of the difference between the two. What she did in that moment was choose to ensure that I had the right information that would allow me to make the best decision that was for me. And it really has been the best decision of my life to become a nurse. So now as I look at it, um, you know, nearly 27 years since I first became licensed as a registered nurse, nursing is not only my chosen profession, but it really is a way of life. I can proudly say that I'm working squarely within my passion, within my purpose, and I wanna share with you a little bit about what that really means to me, both personally and professionally. So as an officer in the United States Public Health Service, I definitely embody our uniform services core values. Our mission is to protect, promote, and advance the health and safety of the nation. And so with that, our values are leadership, service, integrity, and excellence. So as leaders, we serve to provide a vision and a purpose in public health through inspiration, through dedication, and loyalty to our health mission. In service to this country, public health service officers are committed to public health through compassionate actions and through our stewardship of not only time and resources, but of our variety of talents. With integrity, we are models of uncompromising ethical conduct, and we strive to maintain the highest standards of responsibility and accountability. And when we speak of excellence, it really is that superior performance and that continuous improvement in knowledge and our expertise. Now, as a nurse though, and especially as a chief nurse, I developed additional values, right? Values that really guide what I do each and every single day. So as I share a little about what's important for me, I invite you to consider what is most important for you as a nurse. So first I share with you my value of fortitude, right? In these challenging times, I don't have to explain to anyone how challenging it has been across the healthcare arena, including for you as nursing students. What we often hear about is resilience. And resilience is certainly important. But what I want you to consider though is fortitude as it compares to resilience. So resilience is often the aspect that we you know, look back on, we pat ourselves on the back and, and we high five for making it through and achieving, right? Fortitude though can be seen more so as that intentional aspect of yourself that you actually develop ahead of those challenges. So it's, the, it's having the will to face obstacles as they come. It is truly at your core, knowing and believing that you can make it through each day, no matter how slowly you might be moving, maybe even today, through it. It's also finding a pause, right? Finding that pause and taking that time to check in with yourself and make sure that you're okay. You are your most important patient. If you haven't heard it anywhere else, let me be the first to let you know that you are the most important person to you. And it will take you and your commitment to yourself in taking care of yourself, not only your physical, but also your mental health and well-being, so that you can be the best, best version of yourself and show up as the best version of yourself and be the very best nursing student and ultimately registered nurse that you can be. Fortitude also is creating your own pathway and a pathway that honors and maintains that commitment to yourself. So then in a nutshell, what fortitude ends up being then is the strength of mind that you develop that enables you to be a person who can encounter adversity or any challenges with courage. So that's my value number one. So number two, though, is professionalism. And so what professionalism means to me is that you're conveying a level of pride and a level of confidence in your work and everything that you do, always, right? So what I look at it as ensuring that I'm really approaching each and every opportunity 
as one where I can expand upon my career development and improve the health and wellness of the people I'm serving. One example I like to share often, and especially with nursing students and early career nurses, is that moment in nursing school where my faculty member offered me the opportunity to begin an IV. I will tell you and I will admit freely, I did not take that, that nursing instructor up on that offer. Why? Because I was deathly afraid of making a mistake, right? Hindsight, of course, is 2020, and I can tell you that I wish, I wish I had taken it because what it would have allowed me to do is to actually practice a skill that I would need later, but in a safe environment, in a learning environment, and among people who have only my best interests at heart. And so I say to you, as you achieve these opportunities in your clinical practice, as you enter into this arena, take every opportunity to learn. Be sure that you are competent and skilled in your nursing practice, and that's through these experiences that will be coming up for you shortly. Successfully complete your nursing education and then ensure that you are a lifelong learner, whether that's formal learning in an academic setting or otherwise, but ensure that you never stop learning and you're always willing to pour into yourself. A third value, social justice. This reflects my personal commitment to educating, to empowering, and also ensuring equity for individuals, families, populations, and communities across the nation and the world. As a public health nurse, it's important for me to share that the entire population or the entire community, that's my patient. As you all determine and decide what areas of nursing you might want to go into, your patient may look different. It might be an individual person. It might be a group of people. But regardless of who your patients or clients become, what's very important is that you identify equity and particularly health equity, which means that each and every person has the same opportunity to achieve their highest level of health and also of their well-being, no matter their circumstances. So what that means is no matter who they are, no matter what they look like, no matter where they live, no matter who they love, no matter what they earn, everyone has equal opportunity to achieve health and wellness in the way that we know it, we believe it, and we understand it as nurses. And my fourth value, compassion. This one, it's a, it's a last but not least because it ultimately really reflects who we are and what we do as nurses. Nursing is absolutely the art and the science of caring. It is what we do best, it is the hallmark, it is our calling as nurses. And so I invite you to consider that and I invite you to understand that when we look at the healthcare team and all of our colleagues who work together in achieving health and wellness for individuals and families, we know that nurses bring that level of caring, that compassion, that really centers the person in the care that we're delivering. Our perspective is always centered on the person. And again, I say whether that's the patient, the client, the family, the population, the community even, or perhaps even the nation. And we understand that identifying their needs is paramount. Hearing and understanding their experience in this thing that we call care. Understanding that it is the person who directs ultimately what the outcome is. We are partners as nurses in this journey to achieve health and care and wellness for individuals. And so we have to send to that person to not only ass assess and understand who they are and what they need, but also to relate to them in a way that actually glorifies and celebrates who they are, acknowledges the differences, and understands what might be in play for that person that might be a little different for others. And in that way, we ensure that the care that we deliver and how we engage really entrust them to believe and understand and know in their heart that they can drive the success that is to come. So for me, joining the Public Health Service has really helped me operate in service of my purpose and also in supporting communities and achieving the highest levels of health and also wellness. I like to say I love it when a plan comes together. And so what I leave with you is that your story really is yours to tell. I look forward to all of the greatness that is to come. And I thank you so much again for this opportunity to celebrate here with you today. And I wish you nothing but the best as you continue your journey and become a colleague in this profound profession that we call nursing. Thank you and congratulations. That's pretty powerful. Consider what's important to you. So if you work and the charge nurse says, can you stay 
over a few hours. From here going forth, your job is to be the best nursing student that you can be. So you say, okay, wait a minute, I got enough to pay my rent. I got some gas money to get the clinicals. Um, no, I can't stay tonight, but maybe I can come in on Saturday and tell Janine, don't know what your name is, that we can't go to the movie on Saturday night because I picked up an extra shift, okay? So try to consider what's important to you going forward. You are your most important patient. I think your lecture today is about sleep and wellness. Listen very closely because you are our future. You have to take care of you before you can take care of others. That's very important. I hope, no, we hope, we hope that the remarks from Rear Admiral Anisha, Alicia um, Mix has inspired you and cause you to reflect on the impact you will have on the lives of so many people that you will take care of. It is now time to don the white coat. Please stand. Go ahead and put on your white coat. Look at you. You will be in awe how much power that white coat gives you. Individuals are so vulnerable when they're looking up from their bed up to you. They're at their most vulnerable time in their lives. Wear that white coat with pride because you sure do look good in it. So with that said, I welcome your professor, Sarah um, Bixler, who will guide you in the next part of this. Let's join together in reading this pledge. As a nurse, dedicated to providing the highest quality care and service, I solemnly pledge that I will consider the welfare of humanity and relief of suffering my primary concerns, act in a compassionate and trustworthy manner in all aspects of my care, apply my knowledge, experience, and skills to the best of my ability, and assure optimal outcomes for my patients, Exercise sound professional judgment while abiding by legal and ethical principles, professional knowledge and competence, promote, advocate for, and strive to protect the health and safety and rights of the patient. With this pledge, I accept the duties and responsibilities that embody the nursing profession. I take this oath voluntarily with full realization of the responsibility to which I am entrusted by the public. Okay, thank you, Ms. Bixler. It is customary to have healthcare workers receive a blessing of the hands. Please hold your hands out in front of you. You might have to put your cards down. <laughs> okay. We take this moment to honor, protect, and enlighten the care and comfort these hands will provide to the scared and to the sick. These hands will deliver compassion and respect for the people and families in your care. You may never understand all the ways your hands can heal, but your patients will. Being a nurse is a privilege and a gift to humanity. Students, please be seated.
How did that feel? It felt great. Wonderful. Felt great. Now you will receive a pen given to you by the College of Nursing on behalf of the Gold Foundation. This will be a visible reminder of the pledge you made today. If you have a challenging experience at clinicals or find yourself questioning your choice to this path, look at this pen. Remember what you pledged. You pledged to care for your patients with passion, with dignity, with respect, and with empathy. I believe in you, and so do your faculty. We all believe in you. We know that you will go out and you will serve in the great Kent University College of Nursing tradition of those who have gone before you. You, you are our legacy. We look forward to celebrating all your future accomplishments as you work really hard to become a BSN prepared nurse. From the heart, I say to each of you, congratulations and thank you. the photo and the pins and the receipt of the pins. Oh, you're going to pass them out. Okay, gotcha.